Well, it's been a week, hasn't it? I don't know about you, but my week's been tough. It's been a long, long week. It's been one of those weeks that you're really glad that it's sad. Then you can put it all behind you and get ready to move on. Well, I'm so glad once again that each of you are here. It's wonderful to have a full church. Have a joyful church family with us. Thank you so much, choir, for sharing with us this morning. It's blessed to have you guys back. You need to quit taking summers off. Yet. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic to have the choir. Well, today we begin the second part of our series entitled, You Have Heard It Said. You have heard it said. Now, I've got to, uh, you know, in the spirit of school, you've got to have a refreshing what was it that we talked about last week in part one? Huh. What is it? Anger. Yes, a teacher of all people. A teacher of me. Very good. Yes. Last week, we talked about murder and hatred. Yikes. You are here, you missed out. But you can catch it at our website, nampasda.org. But you're here today for part two of our series. In part one, we talked about hatred. And we said that hatred, uh, actually Jesus said that hatred is really the same as murder because it is simply the thought that has not yet become action. Sometimes that action does not take place because we're, we fear we'll be caught. But if we knew we wouldn't, we'd go ahead and do it. We're also told in the book of Isaiah that murder keeps the Lord from hearing our prayer. So, if hatred equals murder, and murder equals our prayers not being heard, then when we have hatred in our hearts, we also prevent the Lord from hearing our prayers. Hmm. Hard hitting truth. It's not what we typically think of when we think of God, but that's what the Word says. And I have to tell you right at the onset this morning, to, uh, Part two of our series is not a fun topic. It's not something we like to talk about, nor is it something we often do talk about. However, as I shared last week in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, the Word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. When I first put this series together, I considered skipping part two. <laughs> because it's one of those things we just don't talk about. But as I thought about it more, I said, no, I cannot skip this. This is something Jesus taught about. So we need to hear it. The teachings of the Bible, the power of the Holy Spirit, can cut 